Hi everyone. Hannah and Robin Miles here from Inspire Me. Yeah. And we thought it was probably a really good one for the two of us to do, uh, which is a common theme that came up for, for a lot of people we work with, which is about relationships. Yeah. Um, and obviously we've married, we've been married for a number of years now. I was about to guess them in my head. <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna long, ask me. Long, yeah, I know, because Hannah, Hannah never knows how long we've been married. We got married in 2007 in July, see? Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, relationships is subject to relationships, which is so important because, like I say to a lot of people, you can climb your ladder of success only to realise that you propped it up against the wrong wall. So you might be a CEO of a particular organisation or reach some pinnacle of success, but then if you're divorced and your kids hate you, is that success? Um, and it's a matter of relationship connection mm. is the key fundamental component of happiness in life. And not just period. romantic. Your Correct. relationship connection with... To, with anything yeah. is connection is most important. Obviously, relationships are pretty key within that. So we're going to talk about our personal relationship, which uh, some of you might connect with. But also, this could uh, a lot of the tips could be used for a connection in any relationship yeah, um, sure. at all. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. Hannah, relationships. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Go easy on me, by the way. Um, <laughs> what do you think are some of the things that have served us really well in our relationship? Because obviously we're here and we're still together and we've got two kids and the life that we live. What do you think? We like us? each other. And we like each other. <laughs> yes, we do. That was the right thing to say there. See, I've learned, guys. Um, go for it. Well, yeah, the first thing would be to do everything the wife says, no, no. <laughs> yes. Um, I think it's communication and working on that communication constantly because I think for us our relationship our communication has evolved a lot I remember before we got married I just had this idea that I, I really want to do some counseling before we get married just to sort of check in if everything's right and I don't know even where it came from but I remember at the time the communication style was you know don't use the words you and and things like that that we've evolved from that now in our relationship um we get a lot of support and a lot of coaching continuously through our marriage and for our children and for ourselves as individuals. That's to keep this communication going where we're really making sure we're communicating from a heart space and from our truth and authenticity and we are actively listening to each other. Mm. Um, I'd throw in that um, with communication, uh, at, well, first of all, getting support. Yeah. So if you think about the things Absolutely. that are most important to you and what do you actually invest in, a lot of people, if I said to them, right, have you done any professional development? They'd be like, oh, yeah, I went on this course. I did this and I did this and I did this. Did you learn much? Oh, no, not really. It was, it was all right. Yeah. And if I said, right, what have you actively invested in in support for your personal relationship you have with your significant other? But, oh, oh no, I wouldn't do that. Mm. Like, why wouldn't you if it's yeah. the most important thing for you? You know, how much support externally have you got to be a parent? Mm. Like, put your hand up if you want to be the best parent you can be. Put your hand up if you've actually gone out to a coach around getting support with yeah. being that. Uh, overwhelming I had to majority, learn how to be a parent. Like, I had yeah. to train myself. I went overwhelming, and did those yeah. Overwhelming majority of people don't get help with mm. that kind of stuff, you know. And for me, for us, that's just ridiculous. Um, and we've had different um, like uh, relationship counselors and stuff. And because we're, we're quite good at some of the communication stuff and this is what we do, we still need someone independent. Because yeah. like Peter, who came here in this room and he was just like, look, you're both very switched on. You're both very good and that's the problem. You both need to switch off and be a husband and wife right now. I'm gonna take that role of thinking about it. You can just say whatever you want because mm -hmm. I'll create the space for you, which was so nice for us well, to Well, it's also having that. someone holding that relationship because when you're, especially when you've got children with special needs or young, you're in that young child stage or the kids are going through teenage years or something, when it could be really challenging, you are the people holding that, right? So you are the adults holding that. And then sometimes it's nice to have someone hold your relationship and someone yeah. actually go, yeah. hey, look, you know what you're doing, good job, but maybe this just needs to be guided yeah. here or there. Definitely. Or, so if so you've ever done, a big one. yeah, so if you've ever done like personal work, it's nice because you're held by that person, yeah. to, you know, and you can be open and honest and all that kind of stuff to have that for your relationship is kind of key. And the other thing I was going to say, what you said around always communicating from your authentic self yeah. What tends to happen is that we've spoken about it before in other videos about the relentlessness of life is that we're, we're, um, we're put under pressure 
and all our energy is externalized in, in looking after work, looking after people, looking after family, looking mm -hmm. after, and, and we're just like drained of that. Mm -hmm. So that when we kind of come home and maybe, let's just run this example that uh, Hannah's done or hasn't done something, it's not really a big deal, but that's Excuse the me? thing <laughs> that sparks me in that moment, you know, that then I come out and I act and behave not authentic to myself, but I could be triggered and say something not in a very productive way, for instance. And that's what happens is that we, when we're out of balance, out of whack, we tend to take it out on the people that we love most um, first, because they're the people kind of there. And that situation, we don't tend to do that um, mm -hmm. because we're aware of it. And also even, you know, what's great is we're supportive of one another. Like if I come back and and I am a bit like that, and I'll go, cool, go out, go for a walk, go for a walk do a meditation, ground yourself for a bit, then come back in, yeah. you know? And but it's also having that accountability piece, right, between us where it, let's say Robin has had an intense day and he comes home and the boys and I are in this really lovely high vibe place and I can feel that. It's having that connection to say, darling, you need to go for a walk along the beach right now. Mm. We're fine, we're good, everything's fine. Yeah because it's that accountability piece and not not allowing it to become bigger than it needs to be nipping it in the bud right there to go yeah this is what's needed yeah and hold each other accountable by saying also you know we went through a stage where we were really learning this of saying can you say that again from your heart space or did that come from your heart space and and really keeping each other accountable to say stop what you just said wasn't from your heart space and instead of saying you you know instead of getting bringing the emotion behind it and getting upset it was more just just gently reminding each other to just stop does that come from your heart space no okay then try again yeah yeah um, so of course part of the communication is also having forgiveness and softness around the fact that we're learning that we're that we're two individuals that are creating a third space of the relationship and we're both as individuals learning and then as a yeah. couple we're learning and then as parents, yeah. we're also learning. Because when we talk about relationship, there's my relationship to myself, Hannah's relationship to herself, because if you're not looking after yourself, you can't show up in the relationship, but then there's the work that needs to be done, you know, for us together, but then for us as parents, individually with our kids, but then collectively within the family unit. Yeah. And this is the thing that I, I find people just don't get help with. Um, mm. And also realizing that it is actually really, really important as well. And I think that's really, um, yeah, I think that's really key. And um, I talk about a lot about realignment. So we tend to go off course by a few degrees and we don't notice it, but the longer that you go, the more the turbulence between the two places mm. kind, of, kind of creates the further that you go over time. And then and what's needed, it's not that you can wake up and you're like miles apart, but it's not that you're miles apart. The problem is you haven't done the realignment back. And it's like that opportunity to clarify assumptions, yeah. get on the same page yeah. as expectations, be hard on the problem, easy on the person, what is actually important. And most people who do that realignment conversation very quickly realize that fundamentally they 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 are on the same page as expectations it's just that they've left things kind of drift realign on them as we said in other videos as well right what actions do we need to take to make sure that we keep this alignment the best we can going forward and it's about having the discipline of doing that but that constant realignment i mean well, we've for... done that quite well because i mean i think when we were sort of pre having children we we did this thing which was our values where it was like hannah's values robin's values and our couple values and then if we made a decision like you know robin shifting work or something happening we would check in on those values to make sure that no decision we made was out of our individual alignment and couple alignment and values as well mm. and the other thing that i think we do well on that side of things is that we i mean <laughs> it's not my preference but robin loves a good list and a good a good goal I setting and uh, it's been something that sort of, he, it's, uh, it's, a, it's really good for us, but it's something that definitely has been, Robin's led it more. But I can look back now and think, but, thank God you did, because it's been really good. But I think you're, you're now more list than me sometimes in some things. Yeah, because I'm such an active creator. Like yeah. I love like yeah. really manifesting and creating everything. Uh, sorry, that's another cool. really good relationship thing is about leveraging each other's strengths. Yeah. And yeah. knowing when to let the other person shine. 
you know, um, and and flexing and uh, 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 yeah, and yeah, knowing each other's tricks and, and letting yeah. Being challenged by each other, like I challenge you a lot. Yeah, you? being <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Um, in a good so, way yeah absolutely in a good but you way know what yeah. i was saying before was that the, the other thing that we do is we, we we check in with ourselves like usually at the end of the year or when something big's well, that, happening that, with that this... realignment how often do you think that we actually do that realignment because some people say oh every seven years you should kind of realign in relationships Only once or twice a year yeah i think yeah. so at least and, yeah. I, and and at peak periods it can be every couple of months if like there's a lot going on yeah. and we're like right let's just do this let's review it in kind of a month what does it look like? So, 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 I mean. Well, that realignment. Yeah, like to someone that hasn't done that, what do you think? What, what's the best way of saying what it looks like to I, do? I'll, I'll, I'll quote Hannah on this. <laughs> um, a little while ago, we were sat there and we were like, oh, what should we do? And we weren't sure. And she said, well, why don't we have a discussion about how we're doing right now? Oh. I was like, oh, yeah. Because she said, dodgy she said, she said, uh, you know, because I think that we're actually tracking pretty well right now. We're doing this, that, and the other. Is it, you know, how are you feeling? though? are you feeling supported and stuff? And and she just instigated in the moment that kind of conversation, which was not a uh, because some people say, you know, if they hear right, can we have a conversation about realigning or, our or, relationship? Or, it's like, oh god, talk? here we go. Oh, can we talk? Oh, here yeah. we go. But it was like generally, no, I want to talk because I, I kind of feel like everything's going pretty well, and just want to make sure that you're feeling supported, my support. Is there anything in those going well? Is there anything we do? That's as simple as it looks. Yeah. A lot of people are fearful of asking that. But what's the worst case situation that can happen? The other person says, yeah, it's not going well. And then you go, cool, okay, I think it's not going well. Therefore, what are we going to do about it? These are the things that we can do about it to make it better. Which That's the worst. That, That's the worst that, that can that happen. Thing you said about the alignment piece. Like, if you think there's something going on, the likelihood is they're going to think something's going on. And then you just both ignore it. It gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. Whereas yeah. if you nip it in the bud of just like, oh, I thought we were going this way, but yeah. I can see that you're not. Can we just talk about that? Yeah. Then we get on the same page. Hmm. Um... Yeah, and I, I mean, you know, we have we have had, he took me away for a romantic weekend once, to which he then put A3 sheets of paper up around the hotel room. Oh, the strategy one. That was good, though. And <laughs> did a strategy for our entire life. He also tried to do this on our honeymoon, to which I was just too drunk and just ignored him. But now I realise that this is his thing that he likes to do and i actually look forward to it we now. need to do that again that Which was really do good we? No, I don't think we do. so anyway before we go <laughs> off subject the one last thing that i'd actually say about relationships it is about realizing that they're important and it is about that commitment and it, it, it is about that commitment and realizing yeah, it's really really important because like for instance even a you know like clients often uh, say to me you know oh, i'm thinking about leaving and stuff and i'm like okay cool let's go there so you've left the relationship, you've left your kids, you've moved out, what does that now look like? How does that actually serve what's really important to you? Mm. And I just leave it with them. And then they come back and they go, oh, I think I've come to the conclusion that you thought I was gonna to come to, and what's that? Mm, leaving's a bit of a dumb thing to do, that this is actually far more important and aligned with my values. Mm. Because I'm, I'm thinking about leaving my home because we're not showing up in, in a way in which to our children that I think we should. Yeah. But leaving them is like the worst thing that you can do. They need to see us work on our relationship together. And that's kind of what's really, really important yeah. about having that as that um, commitment. Talking piece. about children, because I mean, not everyone's going to have kids, right? But, but I think it is something that's important. I think what I've always wanted to do, and we've never really discussed this, but um, what I've always wanted to do... Really good time to do it live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> is that I want to show my children what a healthy relationship looks like and I want yeah. to show them the workings out of a healthy yeah. relationship. Yeah. Not that we do everything um, and it's like a false thing that they yeah. see. Like we have a lot of our big life discussions with the children, not necessarily sit them down to it, but they're around, mm. we have those discussions, they see how we work through things. Yeah. We don't fight and argue, we kind of discuss things and go take things to counselling. Because i never and, win. Um, <laughs> And I think it's really important that our kids see that that's what relationships are. And the same in my friendships, the same sort of thing. I'll, I'll talk about things. And I think that's really important having children for them yeah. to see the authenticity and, of a relationship. And again, this comes back to a lot of the stuff that we do in the corporate that kind of uh, is, in, the, uh, is in, in this kind of like, if you want collaboration, if you want healthy relationships, you need to embrace conflict. Mm. 
it's like how do you deal with the conflict in a constructive kind of way that's important and that's what a lot of people don't kind of realize they're kind of like oh we're in conflict that's a bad thing for the relationship no it's not you know it's how you deal with conflict and and role model that to kind of other people mm -hmm. that's really really important so hopefully i was, about to, say, I was about to say one of the, the fundamental pieces that i think that obviously and it's going to have the last word well is to know your own personality to know yourself yeah, yeah so you know knowing your personality traits knowing how like you know, are you a compromiser are you you know all those things yeah. that you teach so well yeah. um it really helps you because instead of like projecting that blame or aggression or or, or or rage towards your partner, you can go, oh, I see that they are totally different to me and I see that they react like this and mm. I react like that. And you start to soften a little bit and the same thing with your children too. Yeah, so the final, uh, final thing in uh, closing, I would say on that point is that if you finding that someone's pressing your buttons, they're only pressing buttons that were there in the first place. Yeah. So that's where kind of go in and realize, that's why we say it's your own individual yeah. work, then your collective yeah. work. Hope you got something out of this. Love to hear your thoughts, queries, comments. If there's any questions for us on anything, we're Literally pretty say open that book. Is the final thing to finish on is that work on self to work on the relationship. Yeah, if you're if you're your best, then you're gonna be the best for your partner, best for your, um, there we go, look, so she's cleaning me up already. All right, guys, we will see you next time. Take care, bye now. Bye. You just realized that you had this. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Feel free to share with friends and check out what's up next for more videos from my channel.